So we're going to complete the square on this right here. How do we complete the square? Have we done any complete the square this quarter? No? All right. So let's do a really fast review on complete the square. So if you have uh, x squared plus bx, you can complete the square by taking b over 2 and writing as x plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. So this is how you complete the square. So if you haven't seen this before, or even if you have, what I want you to do on the right side is foil out this term right here. So go ahead and multiply it by itself. It's not a conjugate, so you have to foil it out all the way, get all four terms, and then simplify it down. So foil it out and simplify it. And do that right now. So you should see that you're back to where you started. So we're going to use that complete the square over on the x's here. So in this case, our b is negative 6. So that means b over 2 is negative 3. And I'm going to complete the square. So we have x squared minus 6x plus y squared equals 0. So I'm going to rewrite it as x minus half of that. So it's x minus 3 squared plus negative 3 squared plus y squared equals 0. There should be a minus negative 3 squared. So what I'm going to do is bring the constant term. So this is basically negative 9. I'll bring it to the other side by adding 9. I'm going to do also something a little silly, which is write y squared as y plus 0 squared. And then add 3 squared to the other side. What is the graph of this equation? This should be a little more familiar going to be a circle. And what's our radius? Three. Three. And how about the center? So it's almost negative three, zero. It's the opposite sign of what it looks like. So it'll be positive three, zero. So we have a circle with our radius is three, center, positive three, zero. And the best way to think about uh, why it's positive 3 and not negative 3. Just think about the x value that makes that whole term 0 right there. So the x value will be negative 3 plus positive 3 because it's 0. You can do the same thing over for the y's. Obviously, that one is y is 0 makes the whole thing 0. So that's why you, how you get your center. All right, so graph this circle out. Should be pretty easy to graph. Draw your little center, radius 3, draw your circle. So we did quite a few uh, turning circles from general form into standard form. And general form is where it's expanded out. That's the way we started. And then we factored it out, or completed the square to get it into the standard circle form. So we'll do one more of these equations.
equations. So again, we're in rectangular coordinates because we see an x and a y and no r's and thetas. So I want you to convert this to polars. So I want to see an equation that's got r's and thetas equals some other function of r and theta. So to turn this into an equation with just r's and just thetas. And the same four conversion formulas that we used before. So once you're done writing this down, I'm going to scroll up to the, all the formulas that we're going to use. So I have an x and a y. Unfortunately, if it was written as y over x, I could just take it out and put tangent in there. So it's not written quite like that. I could solve for x and y in these two equations. So we're just solving for x and y in those two, and we're going to replace x by r cos theta and y by r sine theta. And from here, we don't have a really good way to graph this particular equation, so we'll just leave it alone. So in the next section, we're going to graph uh, a few more equations in a really similar way. And then after we're done graphing some of these equations, we're going to graph purely in uh, polar coordinates afterwards, which is going to be different than graphing in rectangular coordinates. So we'll start off with a few special equations that convert nicely like that circle did. So they'll work out a lot like this circle did, or in a similar way. So our next few examples in a row are all the same uh, instructions, which is uh, identify and graph the polar equation by converting to rectangular coordinates. So how do we know this first equation is a polar equation and not Cartesian? It's got an R. So it has R and or theta, you're dealing with a polar equation. It's got X and or Y, you have rectangular or Cartesian. All right, we need to convert this. So we could write down the different formulas, the uh, conversion formulas. Which one do you think will be the most useful of the four? So first of all, do we see any thetas? We're in polar coordinates, but there's no thetas. So if I use any of the three equations with thetas in them, any of them that have the trig functions, then I would introduce a new theta here. That would not be a good thing. So what we're going to use, is, well actually, let's, let's try that just to uh, see what would happen. So 
So if I tried x equals r cos theta, I would solve for r. So we have x over cos theta equals r. And when I substitute this in here, so we do have an equation. But what coordinate system are we in? Kind of both at the same time. So this is not a good thing. You don't want to have a mixed equation with different coordinates. So you either go all the way to polars or stay in rectangulars, but don't go halfway. It's like if you get on a boat. you got to get off the dock onto the boat. You can't stand on both for an extended period of time. So let's not go this direction and not use this identity here. What is the only identity that does not have a theta in it? So we got our Pythagorean uh, identity. So we got x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And I can solve for r. So that's one way to use this. And then plug in or uh, substitute out in place of r. I have this square root. There is, however, another option. Let's say I don't like square roots. I don't really like square roots very much at all. How could I turn this r into an r squared? So it's illegal to just write this. That's not mathematics. So if I square both sides, if I treat both sides fairly, I'm totally allowed to do this. As long as you do the same thing on both sides, you're OK. And now I can swap out r squared for x squared plus y squared. So again, when we actually change coordinates, we changed all the way into rectangular coordinates. We didn't have some extra r theta hanging around with x's and y's. So you go all the way into those coordinates. I could write it like x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 3 squared. So it's really obvious it's a circle. What's the center of our circle? So the origin is 0, 0. And what's our radius? 3. So super easy circle to draw. So there's our circle. All right, our next example. Theta equals pi over 3. So we need to convert to uh, rectangular coordinates. So this one's a little bit strange. We're starting out with a theta, but we don't have any radius in here. There's no r. So if we think about x over r equals cos theta, if we tried to use this, I would be introducing an extra r into here. And that would be in a similar way. I'd have mixed coordinates at that point. So what's the only identity with a theta that has no r in it? So we got, yeah, our tangent of theta is uh, y over x. So we're going to use that. So tangent theta is y over x. And we're going to do this substitution in kind of a weird way. I'm going to take pi over 3 and plug it in for our theta value right there. So tangent pi over 3 equals y over x. What is tangent of pi over 3? All right, so take 30 seconds and see if you can figure out what's tangent pi over 3. If you know the sine and the cosine values, you just divide them, simplify it. If you don't know your sine and cosine values, group up with your neighbor, and maybe they know them.
So tangent pi over 3 is square root 3. Or it's, originally, it's square root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which reduces down to just square root 3. So what type of a graph is this going to be? A little hard to tell. But what algebra can I do to get out of fraction land? You have multiply by what? X. By x. Basically, you multiply by your, all your denominators, you won't have fractions anymore. It's not always the best move, but it'll certainly eliminate fractions. You're used to seeing this equation written in this order, y equals square root 3x. If that's still not jogging your memory from pre-calculus, what type of an uh, uh, equation is y equals mx plus b? So it's going to be a, a line, and this, if you write it out like this, it's slope-intercept form. What is our intercept? Our, so our y-intercept is 0 right there, and our slope's whatever square root 3 is. So we know it's a number between 1 and 2, so we'll pretend it's close to 1 and a half. So we got a y-intercept of 0 we're going right through the origin, and I'm going to draw a slope that's slightly steeper than 1. So it'll be something like this right here. So I'm just estimating on what square root 3 slope would look like, somewhere between 1 and 2. So we've got a line with that slope. Any questions on that graph? It should be pretty straightforward in a pre-calculus class. Let's look at this in the original coordinate system, pi over 3. So pi over 3 is a measurement on this graph. Where, what do you think pi over 3 is measuring on this graph? So it's measuring an angle, and it's measuring specifically that angle right there. So it's a different, basically a different way to measure the slope. So we normally say how much you go over and up. The another way to do it is say, hey, rotate this much, and that's your direction your line's going to go. So that's uh, what a line looks like. One of the ways a, a line can look in polar coordinates. You just specify a single theta value, and then everything along that direction, positive and negative. You can do the same thing on the previous problem, where we start out with the r equals 3. What type of a graph has all points with a radius 3? The answer is a circle, all points that are 3 away from the origin. So that's exactly what the graph turned into right down there. So it was all points 3 from the origin. So we'll do some examples that are uh, very, very fast conversions now. So we're going to graph and identify r sine theta equals 2. How do I get rid of r sine theta? What identity has r and sine theta in it? So let's say you are on your quiz. Well, if you're on your quiz next week, you'll be able to use your book and your notes and all that. But let's say you're on your quiz the following week and you can't remember any of these conversion formulas. All you need to do is redraw that original triangle that we had and then use your regular trig skills to relate the different pieces here. So if I use sine theta, sine theta equals which side over which other side? So it'll be y over r. And that's our identity right there. They all come from this triangle and then your trig knowledge. And you can just use SOHCAHTOA or the original trig definition at the very beginning of the quarter. All right, so sine theta is y over r. So I'm going to solve for r sine theta. So multiply by r. r sine theta equals y. So take out r sine theta, put y in its place. That's all there is to convert this one. What type of graph will this equation have? 
So this, the graph has uh, points whose y coordinates are always 2. It doesn't say anything about x coordinates. So x can be anything, any number, positive, negative, 0. So what separate graph will that make? So it'll be a horizontal line. So every y value will be 2. So you get all those points and all the points in between those points. So there's our y equals 2 graph. So I did something tricky on this problem. I use pi. So pi is normally associated with polar coordinates. However, is pi actually an r or a theta? Just a number. So it's not an r, it's not a theta, it's just a number. So let's write down the identity with cosine in it. So you can use that little triangle that's right up on the board. Write down the identity with cosine theta. So cosine theta equals x over r. Technically, you, at this point, you can say x equals negative pi, but that's a little tricky. So let's uh, show that using algebra in a normal way. So I'm going to move the r to the other side. r cos theta equals x. And then I'm going to do the same algebra on our uh, equation we're trying to graph. So I'm going to move the r to the other side. R cos theta equals negative pi. And now we're going to swap out r cos theta for x. So we got x equals negative pi. So on this graph, all of our x coordinates are the same. They're this number, negative pi. What type of graph will we get? So we're going to get a vertical line. So it'll be uh, negative pi, every x coordinate will be negative pi, so our vertical line will be right there, x equals negative pi. So I just drew it a little bit more than 3 to the left. So we know pi is close to 3.14. So now we're going to have some more trickier questions. So we're going to graph and identify this r equals 4 sine theta. So I'm going to rewrite the uh, identity we had above with sine theta is y over r. And so I'll just solve for, I'm going to get the r next to the theta. So we have r sine theta equals y. So where I see sine theta, how can I rewrite this? I can rewrite it with the r sine theta, but what algebra would I have to perform to go from 4 sine theta to 4 r sine theta? So multiply by r. And of course, you got to multiply both sides. So we have r squared equals 4 r sine theta. So on the right side, I can replace r sine theta with y. What about the left side? I can't just leave it r squared. Then I'd have mixed coordinates. So I can't leave this as r squared. What identity has an r squared in it? So we got the Pythagorean identity. So it's r squared equals x squared plus y squared. All 
All right, so we're down here. We are now finally in rectangular coordinates. So we've accomplished that part. We no longer have r's and thetas. However, we need to turn this into a form we can graph. So this is a circle in disguise. So we're going to subtract 4y. So there is no completing the square to do on x's. So I want you to complete the squares on the y's now. And just remember, in this case, our b is negative 4. So b over 2 is negative 2. So go ahead and use that complete the square and complete the square on this term. So are there any algebra complete the square questions? All right, so graph the circle by writing first the center and the radius. So those are all the basic uh, polar graphs that turn into nice rectangular graphs. So these are the ones that basically turn into lines or circles. There are a couple other forms you'll see on the homework, but this is pretty much uh, the extent of it. The next part that we're going to graph, the, the next uh, bunch of problems, we're going to graph in polar coordinates. So we're going to graph more complicated things, but we're not going to convert them. You can convert them, but they're going to look like uh, a lot more complicated rectangular equations. Uh, so what we're going to do is leave them in polar and just graph them in polar coordinates. And before we do that, we're going to look at symmetry in polar coordinates and how to use that to speed up our graphing. So there were three types of symmetry that we looked at back in pre-calculus one class. We'll start out with x-axis. So what does x-axis symmetry look like? It means if you have a point above the x-axis, you have a similar point below the x-axis. So that's what it means to have x-axis symmetry. Now we didn't see very much x-axis symmetry when graphing regular rectangular functions. If you think of uh, regular rectangular uh, coordinate function. Why is this just these two points? This is not going to be a graph of a function. Why is that? Yeah, so basically we'd have one x value that would have two y values. And that's the one function rule is each x value gets one y value. So in this case, we'd have an x value with two y values. So this would not be an, a rectangular coordinates function. Let's think in polar coordinates. There is no x value in polar coordinates. There's only r's and thetas. So these would have a different theta value in polar coordinates. 
So we can get x-axis symmetry in polar coordinates and polar functions. And let's measure this carefully. I'm not going to write down the rectangular coordinates. Well, I'll do it, but I'll erase it, so don't write this down. If the original coordinates were x, y rectangular, what are the coordinates of the point down below? So we would go x, negative y. So that's how we look for symmetry in rectangular coordinates. So we're not measuring rectangular coordinates now. We're measuring in polars. So in polar coordinates, we have an r and a theta that we look at. So here is r, and here is theta, and the point will be r theta. Can anybody see the coordinates for the other point? So we got the same r. If we, don't, if we go out a different amount, we're going to be either too far away or too close to the origin. What about the angle? Oh, very good. Negative theta. So just spin the other way. So there is one point will be r theta. The point on the other side of the x-axis is basically spin the opposite direction. And you have the other point. So the way we're going to test for symmetry So we're going to replace theta with negative theta. So there's our x-axis test. We'll go for y-axis next. Unfortunately, y-axis and origin are a little bit more complicated. They're not too bad. So if you have one point right here for y-axis symmetry, your corresponding symmetric point will be across the y-axis. And we'll measure in the exact same way r theta. So our other point over here. So first of all, is r going to be the same? Should I go out further, not as far, or the same amount? So we better go the same amount. So we're not going to get another r. Now the angle is a little bit more tricky. It would be really neat if we just measured it that way. And I could just say, hey, it's theta. But we don't measure angles that way. We need to measure it this way. So I will use that angle that I just erased. Go with a nice green. All right, so that, that's theta right there. That's not the way we measure angles, but that will help us get our angle we're looking for. So how can I use theta? That's exactly right. You need to rotate halfway, so rotate pi, and then come back theta. So rotate halfway around, and then come back theta. So the angle we're looking for I'll draw it in as phi. So if I add phi plus theta, I will get pi. Oh, it's very Seahawks. So are there any questions about why if we add phi plus theta, we get the half rotation of pi? And all I'm going to do is solve for phi, just subtract theta on both sides. So phi equals pi minus theta, and that is the angle that we're going to use for our other point right there. So that one's a little bit hard to remember. So the way we're going to run the y-axis test, we're going to replace theta by pi minus theta. So our last symmetry is origin. And we're actually going to look at two different ways to get origin symmetry. So we'll start out with the same point right here, quadrant 1. 
So what's one way to think about origin symmetry? There's two ways to think about what it does to a graph. So one of them is a rotation. So you can rotate it halfway around the origin. So if I rotate that point halfway around the origin, it's going to end up in quadrant 3 right there. Now just from the idea of rotating halfway, it should be pretty clear how the angle is going to change. So let's label everything, r and theta.